Hey everyone, this past year people might not have been paying attention, but the Brexit clock has steadily been ticking along. Although for me the only clock it ever reminded me of was that one in the movie Groundhog Day, where it flips over every morning and Bill Murray has to do the same news story to camera day after day after day. But in a year when Corona has dominated the news headlines, it's almost somewhat refreshing. A throwback to 2019, seeing Michelle Barnier drunkenly stumbling out of a limousine spouting a bunch of nonsense, albeit this time from behind a blue and yellow starred face mask. I guess if the recycling of old news continues and it can't be long until CNN resumes its live search for that downed Malaysian airplane off of Australia. I remember at the time of that story I came up with two pretty terrible Malaysian airline jokes. The first one got no response and the second one was shot down in flames. Anyway, the main Brexit story, as I said, has been the EU going back to its Theresa May era tactic of refusing to budge on a couple of important things on the assumption that Boris will likely concede in much the same way that he's had to when confronted by his former lady friends as lawyers. You know, there's probably some good euphemistic jokes in there about how Michelle Barnier wants to do to the PM what Boris did to Guardian journalist Anna Frizzacoli. Supposedly the main sticking point in the EU negotiation negotiation has been the fishing rights issue, and given Emmanuel Macron's current unpopularity at home, if he were to somehow pull off his political stunt then it would probably be the most spectacular surprise involving fish since that story about the 5,000 and some loaves of bread. Certainly leaks to the press heavily imply that everybody else around the table on the EU side are pretty keen for Mr Macron to just be quiet so they can sign some kind of loose trading agreement, mostly involving German cars, and then get on with the important business, you know, whether to order the lamb or the chicken or the veal, and discuss the big issues like what they're watching on Netflix, or whether hand shot first. Anyway, the UK and the EU have until the end of the year to agree a trade deal, as well as a couple of other important things, especially getting around to translating whatever document comes out of it all. The EU law requires that it has to be published in several languages before they can legally pass it, and it does lend a certain irony to the fact that the draconian antitrust laws and fines against Google are being legislated for at the very time when they need Google Translate more than ever. Unless, of course, Boris implies a retaliatory French move, stands up, lighting a Galwa cigarette and walking out the room slowly as somebody plays some Debussy on the piano, safe in the knowledge that Germany's too terrified of a trade war to let anything very much actually happen. Perhaps that was a plan all along, though, that the EU needs to stick to indefensible demands in order for everybody to walk away from the table blaming the other side and with the UK no longer holding back further European integration. Or perhaps they're just stubborn, who knows. You know, there's no expression that to err is too human, but to successfully blame it on someone else really shows political shrewdness, and to really screw it up, that probably involves a plan involving everyone. What's that other one? To, uh, to err is to human, to R is to pirate, to or is canoeing. Dad jokes. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.